Charterman, Charterman, Brian. Charterman, 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 Brian. Greedy comics, toys are hella sick. Hell whacking it. Take a bad hit. Take a bad hit. the brown women and everything so yeah so so that's what he's uh. hey what's up you guys shortimus prime here doing another transformers figure review on the transformers masterpiece takara tomi mp25 cybertron warrior tracks if you try to get one of these you can't get them ever big 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 get your big badass toys at bigbadtoystore.com click the link in the description below very excited to open this figure I always thought tracks was really cool especially my favorite color being blue i like it says chevrolet corvette stingray c3 Ooh, this is gonna be a really cool one. I like the silver foil right there too. Then we get tracks again and then on the back some product shots size comparison and all his accessories Looks like he's coming with a lot and then a bunch of Japanese stuff and there's tracks again and Then silver foil transformers masterpiece. All right, let's get to it and crack this thing open And here is tracks out of the packaging just looking absolutely sleek and awesome I really do like this figure a lot and I am partial to the color blue. That's my favorite color I Always thought tracks was a very cool Autobot. I love that he has three modes and I think this Transformer is very, very cool. I really like it. There are some problems with it, though. There are many, many gripes that I have with this guy. But at the end of the day, I'm just very pleased to have it. And I think it just works out very, very well. So anyway, this guy does come with a number of accessories. So let's take a closer look at those. All right, so we get our typical accessories with Masterpiece figures. We get our collector card, which I'm always a fan of. I really like these a lot. The new design looks really cool. You can see all three modes right there. And then on the back, you get tech specs. Can't understand what these represent but it is explained right here in the directions which is actually a first I think let me know if I'm wrong about that but you can see right there we have the specs all in English so I think that's really cool then you can see Raul 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 all right is that like a Brazilian way of spelling it or something I, I don't know but anyway there's blaster right there so you can see the flight mode now here's a closer look at Raul looking pretty nice you know very small little figurine over here he has his feet attached to this little base then Comparing him to the spike that came with the MP10 Prime, you can see they stand at the same height, and I think that's pretty good. Uh, I guess spike is just a little bit taller. We also get this tiny blaster right over here, and you can see it's in pretty decent scale next to Raul. I mean, that's a monster Sketo blaster, but still, you know, I think it's pretty good. I love that you can see the tiny little Autobot logo right there. I think that's great, and I like the silver paint on this. Nice etched out details right there in the sculpt. And this does attach to tracks, so I'll show that off in a moment, but wow, I really like this one. And then looking right over here, we get this little flight mode laser, or blaster anyway. I'll show how that attaches later on. You get his regular blaster right there. That could be attached in both modes. And then you get these modeling trees right over here for the rear view mirrors, which I don't like. These just pop off very, very easily. I wish they would just make them so that they're already attached. And then we get a flight stand, which I think is fantastic. I'm very happy that Takara added this piece. I really like it a lot. We get rotation right here. You get a very thick joint. Woo, yeah, dang. And then you get screwdrivers right over here so you can adjust the tension on these. And then this one turns up here. And then of course you could rotate on that peg. And tracks can be placed on this thing in both modes, which is great. Then looking right here, you can see a nice looking Autobot logo. Unfortunately, like a big dumbass, I left my keys on top of this thing. I don't know how I did that, damn it. But look, yeah, you can see all the little scratches from my stupid ass leaving the keys on here, Jesus. And once again, I just really like this Stingray. I just think it's a beautiful design, and just the way the figure came out just looks really good to me. Now, it does roll okay, not great. You can hear, you can hear that friction right underneath there. We do have some parts right here that are rubbing against the ground, which is a little bit bothersome, but all four wheels are rolling. And if I were to just let him go on his own, you know, so he does roll, it's just, yeah, there is a little bit of friction right over there. Now again, I cannot tell you how much I just love the blue paint on this. This metallic blue is just gorgeous to me. I really, really like it. You can see the little Chevy logo right up there. And then I really think the deco came out very clean on this. You could actually flip this Autobot logo around if you want to. In the cartoon, you could see him like this, but then there's like a flat version, which I'll flip around in just a moment. Now you can open up the hood, which I think is great. And you could kind of see the silver paint from underneath there, so it's not totally seamless. I like to bend this down a little bit just so I can get some leverage and then you could flip that open and there you can see his engine looking really nice. I love that attention to detail. And then to close this, you just want to shift it back and then move it right down there. And I really like how the tires came out on this guy. No rubber tires still. Really hoping we get rubber tires one day from these Takara Masterpiece figures. That'd be nice. Look on the doors and everything. Nice silver paint over here. 
This looks good. Clear translucent windows look really nice. You can see the top of his head, but I don't know, it being in the middle like that kind of splits these two sides, making it look like it's a real car, I think, you know? And then looking at the side right there, we get the rear view mirrors with a nice silver paint, even though I am irritated that these will fall off. And here's looking at the back. I'm not sure about the accuracy of these tail lights, but you car guys can let me know. Then we get the Chevy right there on the back again. So you can do something right here where you can attach some accessories. So uh, what you have to do is pull this back and then move it away from the figure. You don't have to totally, you know, take it apart, but just that much. And then you can lift this top piece right here. And then you can see that there's a little peg space right there. And you can plug blaster right into that. And there that goes. Uh, just a little tricky, you know, because you're dealing with small parts, but he fits in there nicely and he's not falling out too much, so that's pretty cool. Then you can just put this right back there and then you can close it up again. Or you can put his blaster in here. You can't put both in at the same time, but you can take his blaster and then there's these two ports right here and right here. Either way, you want to plug that in, and then there's two pieces, uh, pegs on each side of the handle of the blaster. There that goes, all right. A little tricky because you're dealing with small space right there, and then you could, you know, close that up like that if you want to. So you have that option. Okay, with these guys just falling off on me all the time and moving them out of the way, uh, you can see that you got to squeeze this back over here and move these wings downwards so that you could scoot this back. And what I'm doing is I'm going to flip this around here after I move the head out of the way and you could flip this around like so and then you could put it back and now you can have his Corvette mode uh, you know looking a little bit more realistic has a little bit of a sleeker look like this no I dig it I like it and I think it's awesome to car went ahead and did that they didn't have to especially because the Autobot logo does show in the cartoon in both modes now to measure out tracks in his alt mode he's about six inches across and standing only about two inches tall and then for your tracks comparison here he is next to G1 commemorative edition tracks and then we have the alternators tracks then here's all three of them with a the bird's eye view yeah, definitely my favorite tracks. Then here's tracks next to some other masterpiece figures. We have MP Smokescreen, we have MP Red Alert, and then the DX9 Invisible, not Mirage. And then looking at tracks next to Smokescreen and Red Alert from the bird's eye view, I feel like this figure's just a little bit smaller. He could have definitely been a little bit bigger. Wow, so it's been so long since I've done a Transformer review, Bumblebee's gathered up a little bit of dust over here. All right, will you take us into flight mode, Bumblebee? Okay, so the first thing you want to do, I like to do anyway, is untab the wings, move those downward, and then you could hinge them around like this. And these are very stiff hinges right here. And move that back like so. And then you just got to remove that whole back piece. And that could swing out. Then you want to move the arms out of the way. And then you can see these two silver pieces right there. You need to swing those or shift those outward. And you can hear it snap. And you can hear that one snap. And then we can straighten out the arms. And then rotate them around at the elbow so that you have the yellow part facing upward. Straighten out this arm right over here and then rotate around so that the yellow piece is facing upward and then swing these off to the side You want to angle them down just a little bit. It has two hinges hinge right there hinge right there So you're gonna kind of hinge it twice Let's see if I lift this up in the back You can see how it's double hinged and then you have this little piece that sticks out and it goes into that port And you just pop that right in right there and you up clamp there, right there. Swing these guys outward. You have the option of having these little missile shooters or, you know, I don't know exactly what these are, the rocket launchers. Uh, you can have those pointing downward, but you really must get these fins sticking out from right here. And these can slip right back in and they can be a little bit annoying. I'm going to show you a little trick how to keep those uh, pushed out. So anyway, so now we've got these missiles out of the way. The fins are up and then we can close this back up right here. And then you can get our wings, or you actually need to turn the wings around and then flip them out. So do another 180 and then flip that up right there. And then you could take these guys and have them face downward like that. Pew pew, yeah, looking pretty sweet. And you got the fins right there. And then you take your flight mode missile or blaster and just plug that right into the front license plate. And there you go, you have tracks in his flying mode. I just think this is so cool. Flying car, oh, this thing would shoot down the DeLorean in a second. Uh, just look at that, it got the missiles right over here. I just think this is incredible. This just really ups the fun factor for the figure through and through for me. I just think this is just really cool. How do you not think this is cool? So this guy's already part way there into his robot mode. Will you take us away, Bumblebee? All right, so the first thing we're doing is removing this piece right over here, and we're gonna put that aside. And then we can detach the arms, and we could flip these down, might as well do that. Flip these up, and get those out of the way. So we're gonna remove this 
back section piece once again and lift that up and move it back and out of the way. You might as well do the 180 turn and then we're gonna straighten the arms out over here and they're already pulled out so that's nice and convenient. Then we're gonna flip this piece outward and then turn it away from the figure and then slide it up and there's a fist and do the same thing to this side. So rotate this, lift that up and then swing that around and then we're gonna lift this center piece and we're gonna take the head out so you get this little piece right there and then you're gonna push forward right here and get that, oh, at the bottom part of it, and get the Autobot symbol raised up. Now you wanna take these arms and you wanna angle them upward so that it matches up with these little tabs right here. There's a tab right there, super hard to see, tiny little tab right over there. But if you have it in hand, you'll be able to look at it and then match up the angle of which those are supposed to tab in to the shoulders or the arms. And it's a little bit tricky, but it's not too difficult. And once it's tabbed in, it stays pretty well, I think. So let's get that in there. We got one side in and there's the other side, okay. These guys, you wanna actually move them outward and move that outward. And then we're gonna go to the side panels right here or the doors anyway, so we could lift this up. Oh, there it goes. Okay, yeah, these things just pop off super easy. Okay, so you're gonna move those down and then swing these up and then what you're gonna do is tab the doors into this little tab section right here and right here. You can see those two slots and see how that side went in and then move this inward and that side goes in right there. Then we could do 180 right there at the waist then split the legs and this is very tricky sometimes just yeah, right, especially the first time, that was super rough. Anyway, you wanna lift this up right there, lift up the hood and move that up and down. And then you wanna split this sideways right here. It's a little bit easier to do, oh, come on. It's a little tricky, there it goes, and split that. And then you can rotate this around. You gotta lift the ankle up and then lift that up. Lift the ankle up and then swing it around like so. And then you have these uh, panel pieces right over here which are gonna go towards the front. So you wanna hinge that outward and then spin it around. And then hinge this outward and spin that around. And get that all connected. And you pretty much have the figure. I'm like messing with the figure while he's upside down, but that's pretty much it. And then you just move the arms down. Oh yeah, you gotta tab this into this. You can barely see there's a little slot right over there. Same thing with this side right over here. And we're just gonna get this all tabbed in there. And it looks a bit funky. Then you could rotate the wings upward as much as you like. Yeah, go get them, Trax. Uh, I just think that's really cool, man. That huge gap over there is not so cool. <laughs> like I said, I have my complaints about this figure, but I still really like it a lot. You know, I'm not ignoring its faults, like seeing right through his back over there. But when you see it from the front, which is how he's going to be displayed on my shelf, it looks incredible. Look at that. That is sick as hell. Now, I'm really digging the head sculpt on this figure. I think it looks very cartoon accurate. I really like that bright blue for the eyes. Nice contrast right there from the blue that we're getting on the rest of the figure. A lot of nice sculpted detail on the head. I really like that a lot. That looks really, really good. I'm really happy with that red paint. It has that reddish orange color to it. I just think it looks great. Let's see if we could spin his head all the way around so you could see some of the detail right there on the very back of the head. So no light piping or anything like that, but you know, I'm not complaining. I think that blue looks really, really good. The Autobot symbol looks fantastic. I love the Autobot symbol over here. Now, these wings, you can adjust them any way you want to. I always like to have them just a little bit further down than they appeared in the show. I don't know, I just think that looks a little bit cooler to me. Looks a little bit more like he's flying, but yeah. These tend to be shown mostly with these moving upward. He holds his blaster very well. You can see it has the two tabs, and he does have tabs in each of his hands where he could plug it into, so I think that's great. And looking at this waist piece right over here, this looks really good. Very clean paint all the way through. Then looking at the legs, and I didn't show this during the transformation, but you gotta squeeze these back together. Um, man, I'm not really happy with this gap right over here. I love my ankle pivot, so it does help with ankle pivot. And you can try to like shift it around so you can get the foot a little bit closer to it like that if it bothers you too much. But you know, if you really want to move it around, you're gonna see a little bit of a gap there. But you know, it's not too bad. You can hide it, right? It's not too shabby. 
a little bit on the back over here. It doesn't feel like it's too empty right here on the back. It's just this higher part over here just seems empty. So if they just had one little piece I could fold out that would fill that up a little bit more, that would be cool. But at least you get the doors in the back over here, you know? I don't know. I'm just, I feel like I should be bothered by this more than I am, but I'm just not. And one thing that kind of irritates me about this is that these knees seem like they're kind of misaligned. I wish these were centered into the legs a little bit more. If you could shift these little panels a little further out that way, I think that would have been a little bit cooler. But anyway, articulation wise, it's not too bad. Uh, there are problems though. You can get his head moving up quite a bit, which I like, and you can get his head moving downward. You get side to side movement over here, and you get a little bit of head pivot too, so I think that's pretty good. The shoulders move outward very far, so that's great. Now getting them to move forward uh, causes a little bit of a problem because they bump into the wings a little bit, so you can see that's happening right over there, and that'll cause the figure to get untabbed a little bit, so yeah, you gotta be careful with that. He does have an above the elbow swivel right there, and he can bend at almost 90 degrees at the elbow, but not quite. He has a wrist swivel, and then he has finger clamping action on both sides. You can see that right over here, so that's pretty cool. He does have the waist swivel. He has this flat piece right over here that lifts up, and what that does is it allows leg articulation, or his hips, you know, to have that kind of movement going on with the leg, and you can get the legs moving all the way outward, so he can do the splits. He does not bend as much at the knee as I'd like him to. You almost get a 90 degree bend right there. Not quite. I don't know. Yeah, not a full 90 degrees. It kind of wants to kick forward on his own. It's so weird. Anyway, what's wrong with you, tracks? But yeah, he has upper thigh swivel, as I may have just mentioned. Now, the ankle articulation, as I said, is pretty good. You get this nice ankle pivot that could bend in very, very far. You can get the ankles to move down, and they can move up. Now, to the top of his head, tracks is standing at about 7 inches tall. To the top of those wings, just a little under 8 inches. And then for your tracks comparison, here he is next to the G1 reissue, and then we have the Classics Generations Reveal the Shield version. And then to compare tracks to some other masterpiece figures, we have MP Sideswap swipe and MP Prowl along with MP Prime over there and it looks like he's standing a little bit taller than both of these figures but he does look less bulky so I think it does even out. Then here's Trax next to the KFC Toys Transistor Not Blaster figure and I think these two standing side by side looks amazing. I love this. One thing I really like about this Transistor figure is the red shiny paint so we got the nice metallic red paint here and the nice blue metallic paint there. Ah, I really like these two figures side by side. And then here's Trax next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Well, hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. What are you gonna do, huh? Bore me to death with your vanity? Wow! Oh no! Ow. Another little fun fact about this figure is that you can plug in a Tamashi Nation stand into either alt mode or robot mode. I love how that works out. Just an outstanding piece. I'm very happy with this figure. My complaints may have seemed copious, but I still just have this overwhelming joy holding this figure, transforming it. The transformation is not very difficult. I just really like it a lot, man. I don't know what else to say. Anyway, I hope you guys liked my review. If you did, please hit the like button. Click any of these boxes right over here if you want more shart in your face. If you're of the age of 18 or older, please check out my Patreon account. If you're any age, check out my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And go to shartemisprime.net for a photo gallery of images from this review. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. It's fantastic. I really, uh, damn it.